You may be seated at this time. The National Agency comes at this time to cover the vessel with the pole. Because of his office as an elder in the Church of God in Christ, this Paul represents the servanthood of this man of God. It truly symbolizes more than anything the fact that the life of Ronald Clarence Watkins Sr., administrative assistant, pastor and leader, will always be celebrated as the valiant soldier of the cross of Jesus Cross, Jesus Christ that he was, whose weapons of warfare have been laid to rest. We get, gladly give to him full honors, replete with salutes, ruffles, and flourishes, because his rank has been changed from that of foot soldier to servant. The designation of all who have successfully finished their course here and will live eternally with the Lord. Brothers and sisters, let us celebrate by the clapping of our hands the life of the now, brothers and sisters, we have celebrated Administrative Assistant Watkins. We've celebrated his military life. We have celebrated his religious life. And right now, we're going to celebrate his spiritual life. Amen. Come on, give him a hand. At this 
this time I ask that everyone except for the family, if they would please stand. And we're going to begin this celebration by the singing of Hold to God's Unchanging Hand. How many people know that you have to hold on to God in spite of the circumstances? Amen. Choir will lead us in Hold to God's Unchanging Hand. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Testament scripture will be read by Superintendent J.J. Watson, 
And the affirmation of faith will be coming from Superintendent Leroy Swarm. Amen. Amen. They'll come in that order. Just raise your hand and grab hold to his hand. And hold on to God's unchanging hand. Glory to God. Do I have any praises in the house right now? We come to celebrate. We come to give God glory. We come to lift him up. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, I feel his presence right now. In the name of Jesus. Because you said in your word, in all things to give thanks. Father, we thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. Oh, we thank you for joy. We thank you for peace. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for the life of our dear brother. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray right now that you will lift heavy burdens, bind up their broken hearts. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you right now. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross. God, we thank you for raising him on the third day morning. We thank you for allowing him to dwell in us. God, we thank you. Look on us today in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, bless this family on today. Give them to look unto the hills from which cometh their help. For we know all of our help come from you today. Look on us right now. Heal, Lord. Heal the wounded right now. Put praises in our mouth today. In the name of Jesus. God, give them the strength they need. The strength that they're going to need in the days to come. Look on our dear mother right now. Only you can really comfort her heart. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We give you thanks. We give you glory. And we give you honor. Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Amen again. From the 40th chapter of Isaiah, the 28th through the 31st verse, it is written, Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the end of the earth, faintest not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He that gives his power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. The word of God is blessed. in these words from the Apostle Paul. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, 
at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruptible and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruptible and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 58. King James Version. find a copy of the Affirmation of Faith in the printed program. I will read as the leader and the people will respond accordingly. Our belief concerning the Bible. Our belief concerning God. Our belief concerning the church. We believe in the blessed hope, which is the rational church of God, which is in Christ and in the church. Our belief concerning sin. We believe that the only means of being punished from sin is through repentance, faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and being baptized in water. Our belief concerning salvation. Our belief concerning Christ. We believe that the redemptive work of Christ on the cross provides healing for the human body and answers to the living in prayer. Our belief concerning the Holy Ghost. We believe that the baptism of the Holy Ghost, according to Acts 2 and 4, is given to believers who ask for it. Our belief concerning sanctification. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, our holy dwelling, the Christian and the name of the living of the Holy Spirit. You may be seated, but let's give the Lord a hand praise. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. This homegoing celebration calls for a solo by Sister Jessica Wright, and she will be singing one of Pastor Watkins' favorite songs. And then we will go directly into the tributes from the, the church, the New Deliverance Temple Church of God in Christ. Missionary Janice Kelly will be giving a tribute from a friend. Superintendent Robert L. Davis from the South Warren District will be speaking at that time. And then from the family, Brother Donald Banks. Afterward, we will be blessed to have a selection from the jurisdictional choir. Solo by Sister Jessica Wright.
a selection from the choir. Let's say amen for her. She comes. God bless you today. At this time, we're going to ask the New Deliverance Temple Church family of believers to stand. Wherever you are. We came today to pay tribute to this miracle man. Pastor Elder Ronald Clarence Watkins Sr. No, no, he's not dead as you suppose. But he's simply taking his rest. A rest that's promised to all of us. For the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. There is a special rest waiting for the people of God. On behalf of the New Deliverance Temple Church family, it is an honor to pay tribute to a man who often spoke of a place called heaven, a prepared place for a prepared people. A man who often told us at New Deliverance Temple, this is the getting ready place. And today, we, the New Deliverance Temple family of believers, pay special tribute to a man who has received his rest. No, 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 he's not dead, as you think or suppose, but he's entered into his heavenly rest. Oh, a rest from sorrow and pain, a rest from labor and fatigue. We pay tribute today to Pastor Ronald Clarence Watkins Sr who has entered into his rest of grace, comfort, and holiness, and his rest in glory, where the people of God will enjoy the end of their faith and the promise of all their desires. No, saints, he's not dead, as you suppose. Of some of you might think, but he's simply resting. He's entered into his holy rest, his spiritual rest from this life to a life of eternal grace and glory. On this day, New Deliverance Temple, we pay special tribute to this man of faith, a man we love dearly. There is a rest for the people of God. Pastor Watkins, take your rest. The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continuously be in my mouth, and I will boast of him. Let me say, I want to thank the Lord for just being here. Thank God for his tender mercy and his loving kindness. Much respect to our bishop, all of the bishops on the podium, all the superintendents, and to everyone that's in the house, and much respect to mother and the family. I stand to speak of a friend. That I became to fall in love with. We met a while back and we were just talking about the Lord and we were sharing military experiences and we were sharing children's experiences, and I told him I made my children fix their bed where I can bounce a quarter off of them. And he said, Brother Davis, you were a little tough. <laughs> then we would discuss the goodness of the Lord and about our church. And uh, he would throw nuggets at me, and I would throw nuggets at him, and we would dialogue. And we will dissect and we came to the conclusion we love the Lord and we love our church and we made up in our mind that whatever God did for us we're going to dedicate it to our church 
And then we decided that even as we start working together on the ordination board that uh, as military men we decided we wasn't going to leave no candidate behind. That we were going to do to help them to make it through to let them not to be afraid of our church but learn to embrace our church and to love our church with their whole heart and to treat our church and our leaders with respect. And I come to find out that we were pretty bold and when we talked, we just didn't back down. We just said it like it is. And we stood up for right and righteousness. And last couple of weeks, and every time I didn't see him, he, he would see my wife, he would tell him, so tell Brother Davis, I need to see him. And uh, the last couple of weeks, I would visit him. And I would sit with him. And you know that Ella Watkins always trying to talk. Through his mask, he would talk to me and talk to me and talk to me. And one day, a couple of weeks ago, we talked so much that we both dozed off and then he woke back up. <laughs> and we started talking again. Then he would give me instructions. And uh, he would say, Brother Davis, he said, come here. I best joke, he said, now some of us are a little bit hyper, so I know you kind of mild, but you're firm. He said, Brain, I'm under control. I said, yes, sir. But I thank God that I had an opportunity to call him my friend. And I had an opportunity to serve. And I told him, I said, Della Watkins, if you need me to mow your grass, call me. If you need me to paint, call me. Whatever you need me for, just give me a call. I said, I'm your brother. So I decided to tell him, you didn't invite me in your family, but I'm going to throw myself in your family. I said, I just feel that close to you. And uh, I had an opportunity to let him drink water, to feed him. And he was just a true man that loved God with his whole heart. There was nothing he would do for the saints of God. He loved his leader in the second jurisdiction. And I want to pin flowers on our beloved mother. visit my friend in the hospital and tried to give mother a break and I uh, saw mother she would comb his hair she would rub his head she would rub his feet she would feed him she would give him something to drink and he would just smile but it's one thing he said when mother went out of the room he keep trying to talk through the mask. He said, Brother Davis, he said, I love that woman. He said, I love her. And he said, I love my children. Then he said, talk to Ron. So I got Ron's number. But I just want the family to know that I know he was saved and sanctified. Yes. Holy Ghost feel and that with fire. Yes. But he loved to praise the Lord. Yes. And before I take my seat, I was thinking about uh, Chairman Watkins. Yes. That he had a silent trumpet sound. And he received another ordination paper. Yes. He was getting ready to receive an elevation. And God decided to ordain him to come on up a little bit higher. Because the Bible said, get my father's house. There are many mentions. But then he said, he received a crown of righteousness. That's what the saints received. I just want to say that he received his last ordination just the other day. As we can say farewell, my brother, until we meet again.
Mother Watkins and the uh, Watkins family, I can proudly say that praises and honors to God. For well, we know that it's only by God's grace that we are able to assemble and fellowship on this day. We should prepare ourselves to be ready. But this is a day that we too will have to face. One hour, one day. For this life span on earth has not proven to be permanent, but temporary. This tribute is to Pastor Ronald Watkins Sr. titled, A Godly Approach, February 23rd, 2019. Through God's grace, I am grateful and highly blessed to be able to speak on behalf of the Watkins and Abraham families and acknowledge, acknowledge their love, respect, appreciation, and admiration for Pastor Ronald C. Watkins Sr. Consistently demonstrating a godly approach you were a tremendous role model for your family. Being an excellent provider, husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, brother-in-law, uncle, nephew, and cousin. Your consistency in reaching out to your church, members, and many others who you were in need, sound advice, and good deeds was second to none. Pastor Watkins, you were definitely a godly gift to your wife family, and many others that you came in contact with nationwide, often sharing your wisdom, philosophies, kindness, and good humor in life in a godly manner, while not allowing anything or anyone to alter your faith in God or your duty to God's work, which was another godly approach. At times, regardless of how your conversations begin, be it sports or whatever, it would immediately be converted into the scripture enabling many others to prepare themselves to listen to God's word, something that was very unique in this day and time, but yet another godly approach. Your obligation and commitment to the ministry was impeccable, and for many years, placing God in your life was exceptional. I witness you saying that regardless of your difficult challenges in life, your life would always remain in God's hands, another godly approach. Hopefully, the life that you live would be a tremendous impact on many others. May you forever rest in peace. Brotherly love, Don Banks. And in closing, I want to say to uh, Mother Jeanette and the Watkins family, continue to keep your faith in God. Always know that you can put your hands in God's hands and be on the safe side of life. Because in life, God is the only way. And uh, Pastor Watkins, one of the last things I can say about him is I talk with him personally. But, and I'm getting a little emotional, but uh, he gave his all until God gave him his final call. And in closing, I say this. The Bible states in Psalms 35, in your favor's life, weeping may endure for a night, a joy cometh in the morning. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. Let's give our choir a hand. This time the homegoing celebration calls for a representative from the North Little Rock District and the person of Pastor Bobby Savage. Uh, the Arkansas Women's Department, the Arkansas Second Jurisdiction, Second Jurisdictional Women's Department will be coming and they will be represented by District Missionary Ernestine Strickland, Administrative Assistant within the Department of Women and the official board of our great uh, jurisdiction person will be Superintendent Jerome Strickland, the first administrative assistant to our prelate. Let's say man for Pastor Savage. Amen. Amen. The house has been addressed. Precious in the sight of the Lord and the death of his Saints. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I shall be glad and rejoice in it. To Mother Watkins and family, my, my friend. And to my friend, Pastor Ron Watkins. Just in case he's looking down on me, I want to know I'm still your friend. Amen. Now you know about Administrator Sister Watkins. Y'all know about Charmin Watkins. You know about Pastor Watkins. And you know about Elder Watkins. But I want to talk to you about my friend, Staff Sergeant Watkins. I want to tell you about how we served and he served faithfully just as he served the church he served his country just as well while we was overseas in the 148 medical event in Saudi Arabia in the Gulf War he worked with the chaplain and he would often joke and he would say, we would have communion, but the chaplain done drunk up all the wine. <laughs> we would inside military joke, y'all. We, we would laugh. He said, Bobby, I know they bought four or five cases with us. And we can't find any. I said, well, you know, you told me the chaplain had drunk it up, so. But he, 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 he served so, 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 so faithfully. Yes. He didn't like the type of service we was having. And so, so I, I don't know where he, what he did. I don't know who he talked to. But I, I do know that we started having the Wednesday night services. Pentecostal style. <laughs> yes, I mean we had we had we had we had preaching. And 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 I remember Sergeant Rucker. He was at New Cavalry then. I don't know if y'all remember Sergeant Rucker. Uh, he preached a sermon one day about Jesus going to the cross in the middle of the desert. And he got the preacher and he reached over and grabbed a chair and put it on his back and leaned over like this. And in the middle of the desert, we had some church. All because of Pastor Ronald Watkins. I don't know what he did, but the next thing I found out that there was a choir. All because of let me not, I'm, I'm going to go military sergeant, Ronald Watkins. Not only did the choir sing in our unit, but they got to the point that the, the other uh, units and companies heard about the choir. And in the middle of the desert, storm and dust, they was traveling to other units, singing all because of Pastor Watkins. He was a faithful servant. 
He was an example on how to live saved in the middle of a storm. And I'm talking about a real storm because I'm talking about desert storm. I went to the VA about a week, mother. I Me and mother talked to see him. And the next week, the Lord called him home. When I was talking to him, I, I could see that he was a little tired. Yet he was holding on and still giving me advice. And I thought about his choir in Death Storm. And I could hear them singing, I'm a soldier. Somebody tell them all I think. In the army of the Lord. The Apostle Paul said it best like this. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. Pastor Watkins, we appreciate you. We appreciate your love, your loyalty, and respect for the women's work. We can always count on you to be there to cheer us on in every endeavor. We will miss your presence, but your strong embrace, praise God, hallelujah, is imprinted in our hearts forever. The last time I saw you, I was sitting over my mother, praise God, and you looked over at me and said, Ernestine, can you cook their legs? And I said, Yes, I can. And I'll cook you some if you'll eat them. And then he said, will you take the bell out of them? <laughs> that was him. Praise God. Gene and I used to shop for hours when we would go to conventions. And we never had to worry about Rama. He would be sitting over on a chair holding our merchandise. <laughs> Praise God. And he was so patient in doing it. And we certainly appreciate that. We, your family and friends, have precious memories that flood our soul. And that is what we will cherish because you kept us laughing. In the words of Afro Lord Tennyson, Sunset and evening star, and one clear call for me. And may there be no morning of the bar when I put out to sea. So long, my dear brother. May you find that eternal rest that awaits all believers in Christ Jesus. And now I will share the letter that Mother Watkins wrote to her husband. God, praise God, hallelujah. From Mother Jeanette Abraham Watkins to pass a tribute to the love of my life, Ronald, Ronald Clarence Watkins Sr. I take great pleasure and feel honored to pay tribute to the man of God. When God had picked, saved, and raised up and prepared you to become my husband and covering. God makes no mistakes. We were perfectly fit and joined together as one. As I reflect on our recent conversations, I was truly blessed. I am thankful for having the opportunity and privilege of being the wife and partner of this wonderful, loving, kind, saved, and Holy Ghost filled man of God. Life could not have been better because I was living every woman's dream. I was loved by my husband as God commanded. The best of everything was at my disposal, whether I asked for it or not. We had our difficulties.
adults. It's like every family. But the difference is, we had God to help us resolve them. It was never difficult to submit to you because God would never authorize a man to marry a woman who refuses to follow, nor a woman to marry a man who refuses to leave. I feel so blessed because God prepared the best husband for me and father of all my children. His name was Ronald Clarence Watkins Sr., AKA also known as Baby Case and my miracle man. You, you were a wonderful example of a true servant in loving and caring for me and your family. Serving as caregiver for your mother, your grandfather, encouraging and supporting me in caring for my loved ones despite your personal health challenges. I told you on many occasions how much I admire you as a man of strength, favor, and valor. I was always amazed by your strength and ability to preserve, to persevere, and remain relentless even in the face of much adversity. Every moment spent with you is memorable because we maintain a steadfast love for each other. 49 years, 49 and one half years ago, I said yes. And we have had an opportunity to live out each of our vows. Our marriage has been tested and proven over the years and yet remained intact. When you asked me last year if I would marry you again, I said yes. I was feeling a little giddy and excited about our upcoming renewal of vows to celebrate our 50th year anniversary as though it was the first time. You will always be the love of my life. The one who did everything humanly possible to protect me even in the face of all sorts of misconceptions. I am grateful that I had the opportunity to share your dreams, hopes, love, friendship, and much more. You were a man who stood by his family through it all. A man who was looked upon as a mentor for others. A man who loved unconditionally. A man who believed in sharing and caring. A man who put a smile on people's faces. A man who was big, a bigger star in his own right than most of us. You will always be in my heart and the love I have for you will never ever die. All right. It is my sincere and heartfelt prayer that you have always known that I love you with my whole heart and how deeply honored I was to have been chosen of God to love and care for you, his servant. The children and I will always remember and thank God for you, your life and legacy that we shall carry on. With love and thanks, your loving and devoted wife, Jeanette Abraham White. The Lord is good, and His mercy, and do it forever. To Mother Watkins and this great family, this great family of friends who have come from both near and far, we give tribute today to Elder Ronald Clarence Watkins Sr., Administrative Assistant, Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction of Arkansas, Church of God in Christ Incorporated, Presider the Honorable Bishop Frank Jefferson Anderson, Jr. With humble and loving respect to the family of Pastor Ronald Watkins, 
I speak the words of comfort and tribute on behalf of the Board of Administrative Assistants to which Elder Watkins served as a member. Will the Board of Administrative Assistants stand with me now to express their respect, their honor, and prayerful support to Supervisor Watkins and the family and friends of our colleague, Brother Ronald C. Watkins, Sr. In summary of what I shall say today, he was and is an aggressive and positive visionary leader to the Second Jurisdiction family. Be it known, Elder Watkins was an active member of the Board of Administrative Assistants. That on his first official meeting of the board, he spoke as if he had senior leadership, <laughs> whereas he always spoke what he believed to be fact and truth. <laughs> Be it known that on his first year of achieving the rank of administrative assistant, he became keenly aware of the national and jurisdictional setting, assessment of such a profound position, surpassing what he used to pay as a pastor. But he met all obligations and responsibilities without wavering. Be it known that to the best of his ability, he undergirded the official board, the jurisdiction, and his bishop with unnerving dedication and support. The records speak for itself. The National Archives of the Church of God in Christ, Memphis, Tennessee, will bear a record of his lifelong support and attendance of the men department and the women department every year. We will surely miss his presence and his voice. Humbly presented, submitted the Administrative Board of the Second Jurisdiction of Arkansas, Church of God in Christ Incorporated. Thank you, brothers. You may be seated. And lastly, I speak as a family and a friend. We became close brothers spiritually and naturally. We share it together. Ronald, Jeanette, Team, and I. We would vacation together. We would dinner date together. We would shop together. Even Team was officially adopted by the family. And I am yet on probation. <laughs> My problem is that I will often prompt Ronald to do or say something when we were together that would get him in trouble with the wives. I repent. But a strong bond existed and shall continue to exist. My friend, my brother, Ronald, Matthew 25 and 21 declares, well done, well done. thou good and faithful servant. Yes.
several resolutions that have come into the bishop's office in honor of this man. And uh, Bishop Missionary Daisy Haley is coming at this time. She is going to recognize just a few of them. She's the administrative, one of the administrative assistants in the Department of Women. She will recognize just a few of them. And then uh, afterward, uh, Superintendent Warren Robinson of the Ordination Board uh, has a presentation and also Pastor Timothy Hobson, uh, Chairman of the Council of Pastors and Elders. He has a presentation and uh, so I won't get in trouble. Uh, District Missionary Haley and Superintendent Robinson and Pastor Hobson are going to read uh, those resolutions that have been selected uh, and then we move on in the strength of the Lord. Afterward we will hear uh, another ministry of music, another song from the choir. Let's say man for District Missionary Dave, Daisy Haley. Amen. Amen. I'd also like to ask that a sister adjutant would, as soon as Mother Haley finishes with those, get those resolutions, as well as a brother adjutant to get the resolutions from uh, Superintendent uh, Robinson and also Pastor Hobson so they can present it to the family at one time toward the end of the service. Let's say that for one more time. Resolution. International Department of Women, Church of God in Christ in Coar. Mother Barbara McCoo Lewis, General Supervisor. Mother Willie May Rivers, General Supervisor Emeritus. Bishop Charles C. Blake Sr., Presiding Bishop and Chief Apostle. Condolence February 23, 2019, to Supervisor Jeanette Watkin and family. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy coming in the morning. On behalf of the International Department of Women, Church of God in Christ in Corps, we bow our heads in humble submission to the will of the Almighty God, our Father, who in his infinite wisdom called from the, this earthly place, I, your husband and loved one, Pastor Ronald C. Watkins Sr. Mother Watkins, words alone are inadequate. We know that sorrow and grief are a must in this life. Therefore, we are praying for you, asking God to comfort your heart and to ease your grief with the precious memories of your beloved husband. Be consoled by reflecting on how lives have been enriched by the love given and the love received. Mother Watkins, we extend to you and to your family our love and concern. Our prayer shall continually be with you. Remember, earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Prayerfully submitted, 
Mother Barbara McCool Lewis, General Supervisor, <coughs> Mother Gwendolyn Lawson Townsend, Executive Secretary, International Department of Women. <coughs> Second jurisdiction of Arkansas Women Department, Churches of God in Christ. <coughs> Resolution and respect. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. From this passage of scripture, comfort is found in the fact that we are supported by faith stronger than death and sustained by the hope of salvation. Whereas God in his infinite wisdom has called Pastor Ronald Clarence Watkins Sr. from this earthly realm of life to a place that's far better and more beautiful. Whereas St. John 14 and 1 says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Rest assured that God has prepared a place for Pastor Ronald Clarence Watkins Sr., who has gone on before us. Where the wicked cease from troubling, the weary becomes rested, and the pain of life shall be no more. Whereas the officers and members of the second jurisdiction of Arkansas Women's Department feel it befitting to express our love and sympathy to the entire family at this time. Be it resolved that in your time of loss, the Lord is with you every step of the way. That our prayers for you is that the Lord bless and keep you all. Make his face to shine upon you. And that his grace will overshadow each of you as you meet the days ahead. Now, therefore, it be resolved that a beautiful light beside us like a sunbeam, and for a brief moment, its glory and beauty belong to our world. But then it flies again, and though we wish it could have stayed, but we feel blessed to have seen it. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be given to the family and a copy placed in the Women Department archive. This re resolution is given on behalf of our be beloved state supervisor, Mother Jeanette A. Watkins, on this 23rd day of February, in the year of our Lord, 2019. Humbly and submitting, District Missionary Haley, Executive Board Chair, Chairperson, Department of Women, Sister Mashanda Thomas, Secretary, Department of Women, Board of All District Missionaries, we want you to stand. Of Arkansas Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, Bishop Frank, Bishop Frank J. Anderson, Jr., Prelate, Arkansas Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. Resolution. Churches of God in Christ in Coar, Arkansas Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. A day of remembrance for Pastor Ronald Clarence Watkins Sr. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, but what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanish away. James 4 and 14. Whereas God the creator in his infinite wisdom has chosen to take from labor to reward one of his faithful servants, Pastor Ronald Clarence Watkins Sr., who served as a dedicated pastor and active administrative assistant to the prelate of Arkansas Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. And whereof, while we mourn Pastor Watkins' homegoing, we are resigned to God's divine will, and we will keep in memory his consecrated life of service, his excellence, his kindness, and his God-given spirit. And 
whereas words cannot express our deepest sympathy in the loss of this man of God. We praise God for his love in allowing Pastor Watkin to pass our way. Our hearts are with you in love and sympathy. Whereas God was the strength in the shadow of Pastor Watkins' long nights, he was his comforter in sadness and the brightness of his tomorrows. He was a solace in the time of trouble, in the thoughts of his mind. He could run to the rock of his salvation and find rest in him. Therefore be it resolved, that the Arkansas Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction Church of God in Christ declares this day, February 23rd, 2019, as a day of remembrance, honoring the home going of Pastor Ronald Clarence Watkins, Sr., a great servant for God. Be it finally resolved that the constituents of the Arkansas Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction of Arkansas, Church of God in Christ, will pay for the comfort and healing of, what, of the Watkin family. Given under my hand and the great seal of the Bishop of the Church of God in Christ, in cooperating at the homegoing celebration conducted in North Little Rock, Arkansas, this 23rd day of February, in the year of our Lord, 2019. Humbly submitted, Bishop Frank J. Anderson, Jr., Jurisdictional Prelate, Bishop Robert G. Rudolph, Jr., Executive Secretary. As Bishop Rudolph said, there are many resolutions and cards from across the state of Arkansas. <laughs> the family of the late Pastor Ron C. Watkins, Sr., wishes to express their thanks for every act of kindness expressed during this, their time of loss. Each time that door opened, I can see that God has stopped the rain, and now the sun is shining. The sun is shining right now. It was a privilege and an honor to be able to work with Chairman Ronald Watkins. I thought about a lot of things that I could say, but I just have one remembrance, that in the hospital, I was there visiting one day, and he said, come here, Juan. I didn't mind him calling me Juan, because he never called me Warren. But it reminded him of my father in his last days, he always called me Juan. But he became a father figure to me, he said, come here Juan. I came over by the bed and I stood there and he began to talk and he said, Jeannie, turn around. And she gave him that look. Then he gave her that look. And I was standing there waiting to see what's gonna happen on the look off. And Mother Watkins backed off and said, okay, I'll do you one better, I'll step outside. And as she walked out the room, he was sick, but he wasn't dead, he did this. <laughs> and as she exited the room, he said, mm, he loved you. <laughs> and as he began to talk to me, he shared a lot of things with me, but he shared one thing, he said that the board of ordination is not designed to make people fail, but it's designed to build the preachers up and make them become the best preacher they can be. And as you go forth, make sure that we do everything we can to make them succeed. He was the kind of leader that was concerned about every man that would go through the ordination board in second ecclesiastical jurisdiction. And we truly appreciate his leadership. And by the hand and by the approval of Bishop Frank Anderson Jr., we have a certificate that will be presented to every leader of the ordination board from this point forward. And it reads as such, the Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction of Arkansas Church of God in Christ License and Ordination Board recognize and commemorate the leadership of Chairman Ronald Clarence Rockin Sr. Be it known to all men that the name of our beloved leader shall be inscribed and echoed annually before the general body of our jurisdiction 
to recognize the elected class president of each ordination class and to continue to lift up the name of our chairman, Ronald Watkins, until the day of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's return. From this day forward, he would never be forgotten, Mother. But because of his leadership, we will always be remembered by simply calling his name and presenting every class president with this plaque. And we give the first plaque to the family in honor of our beloved chairman, Chairman Ronald Fred Washington, Sr. Second Jurisdiction, Arkansas, General Council of Pastors and Elders. Will the Brotherhood of Pastors and Elders please stand with me as we honor and give reverence? And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Jeremiah 3 and 15. Whereas Almighty God in His infinite wisdom and divine love has seen fit to call from earthly servanthood our colleague Pastor Ronald C. Rockin Sr., a member of the greatest brotherhood, the second jurisdiction of Arkansas General Council of Pastors and Elders. We deem it fitting to express to the family our deepest sympathy and we pray that they may have strength to bear their sorrow. Pastor Watkins will be greatly missed because of his great contribution in preparing ministers for leadership. Whereas Pastor Watkins honored the vow, was diligent in prayer and fasting, in reading and doing what is contained in the scriptures, and studied to show himself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Whereas the Bible states many are called, but few are chosen, we honor Pastor Watkins for accepting the high and heavenly call of God to become a pastor for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and the edifying of the body of Christ. We honor you. Whereas we appreciate Pastor Walken for proclaiming the gospel message with intensity, in season, out of season, reproving, rebuking, exalting, of all long suffering, holding up the doctrine of the church of God in Christ. Whereas Pastor Walken fulfilled his duty as a shepherd to care for the sick and shut in bear the burdens, counseled and advised, encouraged, enriched, and served the flock. Whereas Pastor Walken obeyed those who had to rule over him, he obeyed the Church of God in Christ's constitution, administration, jurisdiction and governing laws as minister of the Church of God in Christ. Whereas, pastors, whereas we salute Pastor Watkins, for his dedicated service as a soldier in the military, but also as a soldier in the army of the Lord. Amen. He exemplified to all of us what it truly means to be thou faithful unto death. We salute you. Be it resolved that we will ever cherish the memory of this noble life and strive to eliminate the good traits that was manifested. And be it for the bizarre, we thank Supervisor Jeanette Watkins and the entire Watkins family for the unselfish support and sharing Pastor Watkins' time, resources, and service in the upbuilding of God's kingdom. A copy of this resolution will be kept on record, and a copy will be submitted, presented to the family. How many of we state submitted? The General Council of pastors and elders. Mother, we have also a token for you from us. Chairman Hobson, 
Pastor Bobby L. Savage, Vice Chairman.
brothers and sisters who will hear from the Episcopacy. And Bishop Jewel Robert Withers Jr. is not a stranger to the Arkansas Second Jurisdiction. For many years, he served Bishop L.T. Walker in the Arkansas First Jurisdiction. And he is a friend of this family. Receive ye Bishop Jewel R. Withers Jr., prelate of the Arkansas First Jurisdiction. Today, Bishop Frank Anderson, Bishop Lindsay, and of course Bishop Rudolph, to Mother Watkins and the Watkins family. I'm honored that you would allow me the wonderful privilege of sharing with you in the celebration of life of uh, Administrative Assistant Pastor Ronald Watkins. I have the wonderful privilege of uh, pastoring members of your family. It's a joy. And uh, even though it has not been said today, but your roots are in Arkansas first. You were a member of your family, Sister Watkins, were members of the church that I pastor, Williams Temple, Church of God in Christ. And for the last nine years, he was a member of the church that I pastor, Holy Temple, Church of God in Christ. What fun memories we have of you and he as teenagers. Um, what fun memories because it was never part of his resume that he did not live the life. There were times when uh, as teenagers, Saints, or you go to school, or you go around, and there were some some things that were some frills, but that was not a part of his resume. We always looked up to him because he could sing, you know, and uh, he was musically inclined. That that was not one of my gifts. I uh, struggle with this because what do you say? When we have stood here and comforted so many people in so many situations, and now the comforter needs comfort. It's a struggle because uh, many times we can prescribe the medicine, but it's very difficult for us when we have to take the medicine. And you have heard today many things that we've said to others. And uh, it may not resonate now because the one that you loved, a part of you, because 49 and a half years ago, you became one. And uh, you have been childhood sweethearts. I um, thought about a passage of scripture that is found in Genesis chapter 50. The B portion 25 says that this is Joseph talking. God will surely visit you. And you shall carry up my bones from hence. So Joseph died being a hundred and ten years old and he was embalmed and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. What a sad way to end a chapter. And so Joseph died being a hundred and ten years old and he was embalmed and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. But if you, if, you, if you park at that last verse, that will be gloom, doom. But I want you to go back to the B portion. God will surely visit you. God will surely visit you. That brought hope to Israel that Egypt is not where we're going to stay. There's going to be a visitation from God. And we're getting up out of here. 
Well, you do know that day came. There was a Passover. And when they were on their way out, told them to borrow from those persons that they had been slaves to. But before they left, somebody said, go by and get Joseph. Because remember, he said, God will visit us. I need to tell you about this because this brings comfort. There needs to be hope beyond this day. And Pastor Watkins lived a life that gives hope beyond this day because this day is not the period of life, it's a comma. Uh, it, it, it said to Israel that God is faithful to his word. So every time they had a hard place in the wilderness, all they had to do was look over and look at the coffin. And it says to them that God will bring you out. It, it says that God is faithful. But then when they were having difficulty time in the, in the wilderness and on their way out, it says to them that God will not only bring you out, but he'll bring you through. But one day they were on the brink of the land that God had promised, and then they realized not only would God bring you out, God would bring you through. He said, but God will carry you in. I, I just come today to just say to the working families that God is faithful to his word. Uh, I shared this a few days ago, and I'm going to go to my seat. Um, you know, we travel a lot, and uh, every now and then, we get there early. Because in most hotels, you got a 3 p.m. check-in. And if you get there early, you, 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 you're, you're chancing it that your room will or will not, you know, you know. <laughs> And last, last, last year I was in Minneapolis, got there early, and they showed me if my room wasn't ready. Gave them a number, said that we'll call you when your room get ready. So my wife and I, we sat in the lounge and we were waiting around until we got the call that our room was ready. Uh, uh, I just need to tell y'all, uh, Second. He also served in the interim capacity as president of the Arkansas First Jurisdiction and as an interim capacity of the Arkansas Fourth Jurisdiction. As a matter of fact, Bishop Lindsay is so favored with the National Church that uh, they call him the 13th member of the General Board. Come on, let's get Bishop Lindsay in here. Ten years ago, he retired from being prelate of our jurisdiction, and he is with us, and he is the father to us all. Brothers and sisters, please give a warm round of applause to Bishop Johnny Lee Lindsay. Sunset and evening star, and one clear call for me, and 
May there be no morning at the bar when I put out to sea. But such a tide as moving seem asleep. Too full for sound and foam. When that which drew from out the boundless <coughs> deep turn again home. Twilight and evening bell. And after that, the dark. For though from out of our born of time and place, the flood <coughs> may bear me far. I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar to the members of the College of Board of Bishops, to our speaker and pastor. Bishop Anderson, members of the clergy, brothers and sisters of this wonderful family, and this family, the Watkin family. We've come to celebrate the homegoing Alberta Watkins. Most of us, if not all of us, can not only sympathize with you today, but we can also empathize. Uh, we've sat where you are sitting. This is midnight. But we're here to refresh your memory. Right? We've gone this way before, and we want to share what our experience has been and what the God, the God we serve and what he stands by his promises. I think the servant Job said, the Lord gives, and the Lord uh, take away. And amid your midnight, blessed be the name of the Lord. We also want to reassure you amid this midnight, midnight. We can stand on the promises of God. And I love the phrase where he says, I will never, never forsake you. And uh, he will be a midnight friend for you like no other friend. He's the kind of friend that really in your midnight you don't need no Kleenex. You don't need no towel. Because this friend, your midnight friend, he assured us that he will wipe the tears away. The deceased was a servant indeed. Yeah. As been stated, he served his God. He 
served his family. He served our country. And uh, I served uh, as his pastor for many years. And I'd like to tell you he made an A+. Plus. More than 15 years ago, he offered his service to help me at Deliverance Temple because at that time there was a Ronald Kelly, untimely, a sudden death, and he went home to be with the Lord, 49 years old. And as I think about it, the many sons that I was blessed to share with, 99% of them have done well. But what really makes me a part of the family is because every time I lose a son, it has its effect on me. Ron Kelly and Ron Watkin was my sons. Several others of them uh, have gone, my sons. The Deliverance Temple, 16 years ago, at the death of Ronald Kelly left a vacuum in the church family. Not only was a vacuum left, but also a heavy indebtedness was placed on the shoulder of the successor. And one day, the deceased asked Brother Pastor whatever I can do to help. I'm willing to help you at Deliverance Temple. And it was to me like it was just last month. He called and said, I was just thinking about you. I want to know how you're getting along. I want you to know I'm praying for you. I said, well, son, I want you to know that made my day. To know that people are thinking about you, people are praying for you. He saw that there was a need, and he addressed that need more than 16 years ago. Not only was there a vacuum, but as I said, there was an indebtedness. So he and Mother Watkins took the burden with courage and determination to carry out a vision that God had placed in somebody else. All of us can know how to navigate our bills. We know how to rob Peter to pay Paul. <laughs> but you might not know how to do how I rob Peter to pay Paul like I know. <laughs> but he goes in and he takes over this responsibility. He and his wife and they took it with great courage and determination. Great sacrificing was made all along the way. But I never 
heard him complain. Never heard him blame nobody else. But amid sickness, amid good times, amid bad times, they faced their responsibility courageously. Mother Watkins, I often said to him, how much I appreciated him taking that load and the job that he was doing. And over the next weeks and over the next months, you're gonna be talking to him. You're gonna be talking to him a long time. But I want you to tell him, I really, really appreciate how he loved, respected, and helped me at a time that I needed him most. Amen. These two people, they have poured out not only their hearts for the work of the Lord, but they have given their finance. Many times the mortgage was late or they couldn't meet the responsibility of the mortgage. They were the kind of people that always put the Lord first. I never shall forget, I was a little selfish, greedy. When I said, yes, you can go to the Deliverance Temple, and then when time comes to be pastor, I said, yes, before I thought. <laughs> Brother Watson and Mother Watson was our top payers in the church. As I done messed up now. <laughs> Mother, you are special. Uh, your tears today are not tears of grief, of regret. Uh -uh. Sometime during these services, there are tears of regret because uh, there was a thing that I should have done when I had an opportunity and I didn't do it. And that's what tears a lot of people up at a funeral. You didn't, you didn't love when you should have loved. But mother watching is one of a kind. Your tears today can be tears of joy. I have done all that I could during the lifetime of our relationship as husband and wife. So then, let your tears be that of joy. Amen. And remember the words of the song. If when you give the best of your service. Telling the world that the Savior has come. Be not dismayed. If men don't love you, people don't believe in you. We got bad memory now because of the good thing. that soul with scars from the work that you and Pastor Watson Watson did. I want you to realize that he was encouraged to take up his cross and run quickly to meet him. 
He'll understand. He will understand. And he will say, well done. He fought a great fight. You made a great sacrifice. You did it with joy, not murmuring and complaining. But the hospital knew without a doubt. When Ron went to the hospital, they needed also another bed. You was going to be there. When Ron went to the hospital, it could have been the official day in the women's convention. Wherever Ron was, that day. Thou good and faithful wife. God bless the family and may his peace and his presence ever be with you. Pray for our leader as he comforts all of us today. God bless you. The Bible says that the word of God is quick and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword. Is there a word from the Lord? Yes. yes, there is a word from the Lord. And on today, we will hear that word from the pastor of all pastors of the Arkansas Second Jurisdiction. Brothers and sisters, after the choir has rendered, after they have rendered a selection, the next voice you will hear will be that of our jurisdictional prelate, Bishop Frank Jefferson Anderson, Jr., at the time of his arrival to the rostrum, if you would please stand and let's receive our jurisdictional leader. Choir.
Our Father and our God, we praise and we love you. Thank you because of your goodness and your mercy. We come at this hour and we pray for strength for the Watkins family. Pray God that you would touch them in the hours, the days, the weeks, the years to come. Realize, oh God, that you are a comforter. And we pray, God, that you would comfort their hearts when everybody's gone. In the midnight hour. When someone said precious memories start invading their minds. I pray, God, you'll be there in the end. To let them know that you have them and that everything is going to be all right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before you take your seat, we thank God for his blessings. In the book of 1 Peter, first chapter, the third verse said, Bless be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, yes. which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope, a living hope, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Please be seated. Bishop Lindsay, Bishop Withers, Bishop Rudolph, and all the administrative assistants and clergy, all the women of our church, Lady Anderson, Mother Watkins, the entire Watkins family, the marketplace is empty. There's no traffic in the street. The builders' tools are sound. No more time to harvest wheat. Busy housewives cease their late. In the courtroom, there's no debate. All work on earth is suspended as the king comes through the gate. The king is coming. The King is coming. Praise God. He's coming for me. Ronald Clarence Watkins. We have been here almost three hours. And how do you shorten a service for a man who have accomplished so much, who have done so much, and who have lived such a magnificent life? I promise you that I will not be here very long. I listened to the tributes and I said, well, I don't want to say that. That's been said. Somebody else got up and I said, well, that's been said. And on and on and I said, well, I just might well get on up and dismiss us. <laughs> But what a great man of God, a soldier. The scripture tell us many things about the death of a saint. And the scripture does not gloss it over. The fact that death is a painful reality 
for us. Nor does it tell us to pretend to be happy about death of a loved one. We are expected to cry, have times of great sadness and mourn and be at a loss when a loved one dies. But the comfort that you have in the midst of death, that there is hope. That there is hope in the midst of death. And then when you have been as loyal and as faithful as you have been, then you can rejoice in the fact that he's not suffering anymore. You would not want him to continue to be here suffering. Amen. But you know that, Lord, I did everything that I could. It's a day of grieving. It's a day of grieving. And your grief, don't treat it like it's a stranger. Don't send it to the kitchen when company come. Don't try to act like you're all right when you're not all right. Sometimes you just got to cry. Amen. Don't, don't. We used to tell folk, be strong, don't cry. That's the wrong thing to tell folk. And, and we did we did it out of uh, out of ignorance. We just didn't know. We don't let the folks see you cry. And uh, but cry. And the only way back to wholeness, Amen. You can't to let it out. Yeah. Grieve until the cup is empty. Yeah. Grieve lovingly. Yeah. Grieve patiently. <laughs> and if you do that, you make it back to wholeness. We're here for you. We're here for you. Amen. Your house has been filled up with people since the very time that they heard that Ronald Watkins passed. But the funeral is just about over. Company gone home. You find yourself by yourself. That's the time that you're going to need. Lord. Today we all hear patting you on the back. We all hear throwing out good words. Isn't it something how we crowd the house when we hear about death? But then after the service is over, nobody's there. I feel like that you need people after the service. Somebody, amen, to be there. I know the sons run the hospital you there. Amen. To the sons, you had a special day. And the thing that you need to do is take up the torch and run with it. Am I calling you to preach? No. But I can call you to ministry. I can call you to ministry. And in your ministry, reflect back on the life of your fathers. How that, what he told you, in those hours when you all are by yourself,
Just think about what he told you. Tiffany, baby girl, my baby girl, amen. I know that you got your husband there to hold you and to talk to you. But remember when you were that little girl and remember the words that he told you. You gonna make it. Yes, you make it. Yes, Ron, you're gonna make it. Yes. Other sons, you're gonna make it. The grandchildren, you're gonna make it. Amen. Jeanette Abraham Watkins, yes. supervisor of the women department. I want to say to the missionaries, Amen. She need you now. She needs you now. Make a telephone call. I know this is a strange eulogy, but y'all don't say everything else. <laughs> call her. Get on the phone and call. And when you get on the phone, don't stay all day. <laughs> Amen. Another thing is, all of us in here, when you don't know what to say, don't say nothing. Just say I'm praying for you. You know, you know, because misery love comfort. And sometimes we have to say the wrong thing. Yet, though we mourn for our dear brother, we have in Jesus Christ a great hope. Yes, sir. There in First Peter, it's called a living hope. This is a hope that lives and breathes. This is a hope that can never perish, spoil, or fade. In fact, Peter tells us, it's kept in heaven for us. In other words, there's no touching this hope. And we tend to think of death as the end. We think of death as the culmination of all that we know. We think of it as an endless void, darkness that never ends. The end of all hope, ah, but we are mistaken. And to our detriment, we believe a lie. The scripture tell us about the reality of death. The reality of death is a far cry from the fiction that we believe about death. Psalms 116 and 15 said, Precious in the sight of God is the death of his saints. And in the last hours, in the last minute, in the last moment, our Lord Jesus was with Elder Watkins. He was there in a powerful present. Elder Watkins was a child of the covenant, a man who gave his heart over to our Lord Jesus. And dare I not say, uh, one, he was one of the elect, saved not by any good works of his, but he was saved by the mercy and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's a preacher, he's a pastor, administrative assistant. Amen. He was a good man. He was a good man. Praise the Lord. And I'm just about finished. He was a good man. And to lay on a, in a chair that was this wide. And somebody said, what's love got to do with it? Emotion. Amen. That's love. That's love. That's love. When you can, when you can love like that, when you can give up your life for someone else, even though you saw the life coming out of him, amen, you were still giving him your life. No, 
two years, back in 16, 2016, when a man, when he died. But you said, Lord, not now. You prayed him back. It wasn't the bishop that came by and did it. But you told the Lord, not now. And I know that you still want him to be here. And God, but you know, you know the other day when you said you walked in the room and 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 and, and you told him to look at you, and and uh, and wow, you said he was looking past you, and you said, don't you, don't you think I'm pretty no more? You 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 looking past me, but he saw something else. Yeah. <laughs> He was looking. You see, there is a magnetic pull. We don't just die. There is a gradual pull that start pulling on us. And he felt that pull coming. While he was looking past you, he saw a light, a glorious light. Amen. And then when you tried to get his attention off of him, but that light was there and God was showing him it's time to come home and run when he threw his hand up. You thought something else was going on. But he was telling God, here I am. He was saying, I'm ready. And he was ready. Because the body, if this whole building, amen, sometimes get the lean. This whole building sometimes get the start to start turned down. But have another building. Mm. Eternal in the heaven. That's not made with hands. And he kept sending up his timber. And you know what I'm talking about, Brother Strickland. You're building your son on the house now. But when the house get ready, yeah. And he can't, he can't get there. You had it, preacher. Amen. The room was ready. It was not ready in 2016. There needed some more stuff done. But I, I thought about a father. Let me close with it. The father. And his daughter was driving in the countryside with the windows down. And a bumblebee flew in the window. Uh -huh, and the girl started slinging her arm, screaming. And because of bumblebee. But the problem was that she was allergic to the bumblebee state. And if the bee stung her, she probably would have died. But the father pulled over to the side of the road and grabbed that angry bumblebee. And the bumblebee stung him in the hand. And he threw him out the window. And the young girl was still crying. And he told her, it's all right now. It's all right now. He can't hurt you no more. I took the same for you. Well, bless his name. Just stop by to tell you that death can't hurt you no more. Because Jesus went out on Calvary and took the sting from us. For us, they laid him in a grave. They thought they had him down. But I see him step back out the back door of the body. Went down in the underworld and led captivity 
captain and came back out of hell with the keys of death, hell, and the grave. So I'm so glad he took my sting. He pulled the sting out of death. And death is no longer a period, but death is a comma. Oh, bless his name. Because when Jesus died and when he pulled the sting out of death, he left it hanging. a comma, we pause over here and wake up over there. Well, the other day, the comma came. He closed his eyes and woke up in glory. And now he's looking down on us and said, if you could see me now, if you could see me now, I'm walking streets of gold. If you could see me Standing whole. If you can see me now, I wouldn't want to leave this place because I've seen the Lord's face in the midst of death. There is hope. our leader on today. The agency is now coming at this time. As the agency prepares to remove the pole from the vessel, that everyone, if you would, just remain seated until after the bishops and the leaders of our jurisdiction have left. And I believe the family will be next. because God is in control, a church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. Sunday evening Pentecostal service, 7 p.m.